Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition is Tag Team Match Muscle, brought to us by Bandai. Muscle is based on the anime and manga series which was first created in 1983, known as Kuniko Man, literally meaning Muscle Man. Kuniko Man was a long-running manga series, it had an anime with well over 100 episodes, and was eventually actually dubbed into English, known as Ultimate Muscle in North America. The game spawned many video game adaptations over the years. This was one of the few of those games that actually made it in North America. A few of the other ones came much later, once Ultimate Muscle debuted on North American television. As you've probably guessed already, it's based around pro wrestling. While the anime had previously not been seen in North America at the time of the release of Muscle, it is actually not too surprising that Bandai brought the game over to North America being that it was pretty simple to bring over without much knowledge of the anime being needed in order to enjoy the game. Bandai also released other anime-based games in North America, sometimes completely changing them, such as Dragon Power being based on Dragon Ball, you had Chubby Cherub, and Ninja Kid also based on different animes but completely changed in their North American release. Out of all of them, this game actually remains the closest to the anime series. When you start up the game, you can play one or two player versus, and then you select two fighters to play as. All the matches in the game are tag team based. In this particular run of the game, I'm going to be playing as the main character of Kinoko Man, and starting with my other character being Buffalo Man, who just happens to be my favorite one to play as. Each of the characters has a special move that they can pull off by grabbing a glowing orb. You then have to do different things in order to perform their special move, which each character is being different. For example, Buffalo Man here has the Hurricane Mixer. A flying spin kick that's pretty easy to pull off. All you have to do is actually press the attack button while standing still of an enemy and you'll go launching towards them. Kaneko's Man's move is a little bit harder to pull off and I'll be doing that a little bit later, but it's the most famous move of course from the series being the Kaneko Buster, also known in North America as the Muscle Buster. This is a move that you've seen actually in many different video games over time, and different variations have actually been done by North American pro wrestlers. One of the reasons why the game remained so close to the anime and manga was the fact that the toy line for the series, known of course as Muscle, was also brought to North America in 1985. This was a series of officially 236 2 inch tall figures. While unfortunately they're a little bit before my time, they obviously were popular enough to be done from 1985 until 1988. While there was 236 different unique figures for Muscle, only of course a handful of the characters are available in the game. Besides the two that we're playing as, there's also Terry Man, who we've seen already, the blonde haired blue trunk wearing wrestler. There's also Ramen Man, the kind of more stereotypical Asian Kung Fu looking wrestler. Then there are the two that we're currently fighting in Robin Mask, who looks like the Blue Knight, the Warsman, who is the all-black wrestler. There is Ashura Man, who is blue, has four arms and two heads based on Indian mythology, and then Geronimo, a North American, Native American, who actually can throw tomahawks as his weapon. Now, you may be wondering why, of course, playing while also doing the introduction is because unfortunately the game doesn't have too much to offer as far as its gameplay goes. But for the gameplay, you have each match which is broken up into two separate rounds. Each of you has a total number of health. If you tag out to your partner at any point, that partner has a different health meter than you currently have. So your goal is to deplete all your opponent's health as quick as possible, usually preventing them from making a tag to their tag partner so you don't have to deplete that character's health as well. There are three different types of rings that the match takes place in. You have the normal ring, you have the ice ring, which I was just battling in, which of course you're slip sliding all around, and then there's the electrical ring, which I am in now. As you can see, the screen consistently flashes, and any time you actually run into the ropes, you'll have to jump off the ropes to get away from them, but you take consistent damage the entire time. After you win two out of three falls against your opponent, you then move on to the next match, and it repeats, of course, going on and on for as many rounds as you can consistently keep winning. You keep racking up a total score count at the end of the game to see what basically the highest score you can possibly go before you end up losing a match. Now, the set of rings kind of works a little bit weird that you have, basically, you'll fight a match at each of the individual rings, and then actually stay at the electrical ring all the way through round number six. Here at the end of round number three, though, I hit the Kuniko Buster, aka the Muscle Buster, on my opponent in order to win. 
Now, for the combat in the game, you have a jump attack and a normal attack. You mix those up in order to, of course, do more and more damage to your opponent, with the most powerful move really being, besides your finisher, being the German suplex-like move. To do this, you're going to have to get behind your opponent and then hit the attack button. It can sometimes be a little bit weird with the grappling in order to do so. Sometimes when just attacking your opponent from the front, you'll end up just pushing him or punching him, and sometimes he'll actually bounce off the ropes and come back at you like an Irish whip, where you would whip your opponent into the ring, and then he will come back at you. Since the Kineko Buster is used by actually getting into the German suplex position, once I get the special, I then have to get behind the opponent in order to do so. One of the tricks to the game I'm getting through quickly is actually consistently German suplexing your opponent over and over again. Usually my goal is to kind of bait them into doing a jump towards me and then get behind them and hit the German suplex. As soon as I hit it one time though, you can usually get them in a loop of consistently hitting them all the way until you get to the ropes. You want to be careful of course on the electrical ring that you don't get too close to the ropes yourself and then I'm getting shocked, but sometimes it happens no matter what. You can tag out to your partner at any time, you just have to get close enough to him and press the A button and you'll switch sides. However, the only thing is when your partner ends up getting in the ring and you take control of him, sometimes you'll be a little bit too close to the ropes with the electrical ring and end up getting shocked for a few seconds. After you've done the first three matches of the game, where you get to fight all six of the other opponents in the game, the wrestlers you end up fighting afterwards seem to be set kind of at random. Thankfully, they do switch up, so overall, after fighting about ten or so matches, you probably at least make contact with all the other opponent wrestlers in the game. Unfortunately, there's no mirror match in the game, so you can't end up facing yourself at any point. Interesting to note that the North American release has Geronimo, the Native American wrestler. In Japan, though, they actually have Brocken Jr. Now, Brocken Jr. is actually a Nazi from Germany, and he actually uses a Nazi gas attack as his main move. Not really too surprising that that element of the game wasn't brought over to the North American release. Like I mentioned earlier, some of the other games in the Muscle or Kineku Man series were actually released in North America, mainly to coincide with the release of Ultimate Muscle here in North America. Now with that, they actually made a game for the PlayStation 2 and the Nintendo GameCube, and these games were actually made by AKI. AKI is famous for creating not only the Def Jam Vendetta series, but also were famous for creating the WAF No Mercy, WrestleMania 2000, and WCW vs. NWO Revenge games, some of the most popular wrestling games ever made. While the different rings do add a bit of different difficulty throughout, overall the opponents don't get too much more difficult, at least not that I noticed in the amount of levels I played. Some of them can be a little bit quicker at times, so you get less of a window to kind of combo your attacks, especially if you want to keep hitting that German suplex over and over again, but definitely nothing rage inducing for sure.
the ice ring, like here, is definitely the hardest to control yourself on because you're sliding all around. Also, when you're going for any of the standing attacks, the ones that aren't based on actual grappling, you actually have to let go of the D-pad and then press the attack button in order to do the move. At least that's what happens when you try to go for the Hurricane Mixer from Buffalo Man. I figured the best way to kind of show everything in the game was do about 10 matches or so. I played for a little bit longer than that, but nothing was really changing, and I couldn't find a definitive answer really anywhere as if the game continues non-stop or does it eventually reach an end with some sort of ending. While Muscle is considered by a lot of NES critics to be a bad game, I really don't feel it is that way. I, I feel that the game is very simplistic, and it takes a tiny bit to get used to kind of everything that's crazy going on with it, but I think the real downfall with it is it falls into mediocrity, especially in the early days of the NES, because even for an early NES title, it's not even the best in its genre. With Nintendo's Pro Wrestling, part of the Black Box series, easily superior to this game, at least as a wrestling video game goes. The tenth and final match I'm going to be doing in this run of the game will take place once again at the Electrical Ring. I'm able to get a nice series of German suplexes that start off and knock my opponent into the ropes. Besides the games I mentioned earlier, Bandai actually did a lot of other anime and Japanese culture based games, including Ultraman, Saint Seiya, and even Dirty Pair. Unfortunately, none of those games actually made it to North America for the NES, some of which were Famicom Disk System based games, and I guess they didn't want to move them over to the NES console. But it still would have been fun to see some more of Bandai's licensed games actually make it over to North American shores. And there we have I win my 10th matchup in the game and have over 400,000 points for my total high score, which unfortunately, like many high scores in NES titles, once you turn off the game, you end up losing. But either way, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.